Hello, and welcome to Hanging Out with Howie on Monday nights. We have a great panel with us tonight. We have Travis to my right, um, my good friend and um, like-minded thinker way too much, Brian S. Red. <laughs> Over here, we have our superstar from uh, Lake Placid, Eric Wilson. Where is he? And my good friend and a student, I must say, Jay Swinger. Brannon. Swinging Jay Brannon. I like it. Thank you guys for showing up. Now, My Eric, pleasure. Eric brought up a very yeah. interesting topic, and actually two of them. And he pitched this a while ago, and then, man, we all got working and busy and expo and everything else. So it's been on the back burner for a few months, but it's it, I think it's pretty cool. And I'm going to clean it up for the PG audience that may be listening after the recording. <laughs> it says... So <laughs> you thought you stunk at your event, but your client thought you were fabulous. Eric, it was your idea. You <laughs> go first. So, you know, we all high, held high, very high expectations for ourselves. We want to yeah. hit a home run every single time that we step up yeah. to the, the, the plates, the platters, right? So right. tonight I, I told my family we were at dinner and I said, um, I said, I got to do a show with Howie and the guys tonight. Tammy said, what's the topic? I said, well, it's one that I threw out the other day or a mm -hmm. couple months ago, I guess it is now mm -hmm. where I said, you know, we could, I come home from a job and, you know, I think that I sucked, but oops, I, I didn't say that. I thought that I stunk, <laughs> but you know, the bride and groom said tonight was the best day of my life. She goes, you say that almost every week. I go, not every week, but yeah, you know, I hold such high expectations that man, if I blow one mix or if I, goof and you know play the wrong song and i clear the floor that goes there there's my 10 down to a nine and a half do that twice in the night three times in the night maybe that's commonplace for most people but for us guys i think they're in this group right here we don't expect to ever clear the floor we think that we're going to nail every single song every single mix but sometimes mm -hmm. we're just off a little bit you know mm -hmm. and so i don't know i, I just think that most times our expectations might be a little bit too high for ourselves. And, you know, the bride and groom, of course, they do come into this with, you know, rose colored glasses on and, and for almost every bride and groom, it is their best night of their life. It really is. And as long as we play the right song, zuh, I think that they're going to have a great time, but sometimes maybe our execution or something might be a little off and maybe they're not the, not the correct order of the songs. And so we come home and go, man, I thought that I stunk tonight, but the bride and groom thought we were awesome. Thank That's you very much, Eric. <laughs> We're going to go to you next, Travis. Have you ever had that feeling? Yeah. I mean, I think we all have that feeling at least once a year. I've dealt with a lot of crowds that just were very introverted. They didn't want to dance very much, even though I always ask every bride and groom, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your family and friends when it comes to dancing? And some, it's, it's rare to get anything lower than an eight. So when you walk into those events and you're expecting just to have a packed dance floor all night, sometimes it's just not there to be had. And I beat myself up for that as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll go through the whole night. And I'm like, man, that was just a subpar performance. And then uh, one wedding in particular I did a few years ago, the father of the bride came and handed me a tip and I didn't look at it immediately. I told him, thank you. And it ended up being like a $300 tip. And a note that was wrapped up said, awesome job tonight. And I was like, really? They liked that? I thought that was terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think where we get that feeling from is we, like like Eric said, we hold ourselves to super high expectations. Mm -hmm. And if we feel like we don't nail it, then we feel like that's translated to the bride and groom. But the one thing I think we forget a lot is, you know, a lot of our clientele, especially in the wedding market, they're, you know, they are never going to get married again, at least hopefully that you know, they found their soulmate and they never have to do the whole wedding process again. So it's very hard to get repeat service or repeat customers from the wedding industry. So they don't know what to expect. They're not going to know unless we really mess up really bad. Like if we play the wrong song for the father daughter dance or something like that. But if we're mm -hmm. in the middle of dancing and we're doing a mix, if we mess up a little bit, yeah, we hear it, but the crowd may not necessarily know or understand that, Oh, I messed that up. 
So right. sometimes I think we also got to keep ourselves grounded a little bit and knowing that as some clients are not going to be able to recognize when we mess up and then we beat ourselves up over it. But um, yeah, I mean, just this past weekend was a wedding. It was a micro wedding. So I didn't expect a whole lot of dancing out of it to begin with. I thought my performance was terrible, but the bride and groom had said nothing but great things at the end of the event, at, at the end of the event. So I couldn't complain. I beat myself up over pretty much nothing at that point, but, uh, and then, you know, and I've had, I've also had the opposite where I've had gigs that I thought I knocked it out of the park and mm. you're met with guests that are just kind of cold and distant at the end of the event when I'm telling everybody good night. So mm. there's been events that I thought I was terrible and passed out 15 business cards because people asked for them. And there's been events that I've rocked out completely and no one asked for business cards. So Alrighty. Well, thank you for uh, answering the second question. Uh, we're <laughs> we are gonna Travis is the new we're, Jay. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. But he kind of yeah. stays on point. So he, he does he, stay on point. Well, we on point with, Jay with that said, I know Brian mentioned before that we started the recording that he has lots of ideas. So we're going to ask Jay for his Reader's Digest version so that Brian has time to answer. That's the timer. Well, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, and a lot of you knew about my Saturday night event. I got next to no information from the bride and groom. Right. And when I say next to no information, I had a first dance, father, daughter. I show up. They're like, yeah, we're doing the first dance out in the gazebo over there. I'm like, oh, I'm set up inside here. <laughs> And the bride's like, but we told the DJ and I was hired through another company. I go, not a problem. I have another system. We'll take care of it. Took care of it. And I said in my head when they came in the room at seven, this should end at 10 instead of 11. And we had 85 people. And by nine o'clock, I think we had 20. And it was mm -hmm. mostly an Asian crowd that didn't speak English. So they were older and they kind of bounced. Bride and groom thought it was great. Mom tipped me the, sa the same thing. I've just learned I have two kind of two mindsets at every event. Mine, which is I have my standard, which I want to meet and, and exceed, mm -hmm. which is every mix is on point. Everything is great. I haven't had a wedding in years, maybe 10 years where I played the wrong song for something because I, I, you get burned once. And if this is the way you feed your family, you don't get burned twice. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't really leave weddings going, oh man, I messed this up. I don't really mess much up. There are times this, where I go, I didn't read them correctly. That's what I meant. I didn't mean I played that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. And I didn't think you did, oh, yeah. Eric. I, right. I didn't think you, at your caliber with the whole American great, you know, hero background <laughs> that you stole and the <laughs> peeing the bandit stars that you've put over your head. No, no, no. I didn't think I didn't think you were saying that because I think there's that level. You you get a certain level of experience where you're like, I already know what to do. It's how do I have those wow moments? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I've mentioned it a million times. Little John turned down for what into Luke Bryan, country girl, shake that for me at an urban country wedding that kills. And people go, oh, wow, you're that kind of DJ. I want that for me. What I want for the bride and groom is for them to smile and be happy. So whether they dance all night or not isn't the, the litmus test. It's were they happy? And we all famously know back in June, I did a wedding where I made friends with the 96-year-old grandmother and had her get on the decks and do a little mm -hmm. wiki wiki. They were a very budget oriented group that was like complaining about money the whole and told me in the last email, don't expect dancing. It's just not that crowd. And they did dance quite a bit and they ended up tipping me almost four hundred dollars. And I was like, wow. But I yeah. realized something that night that was that really taught me a new lesson. My job isn't always about the music. It's about the moment mm -hmm. and it's about the memory. You know, they all start with the letter M, but we got to sometimes mm -hmm. stop and say, damn, that's maybe you're not going to be wiki wiki tonight. So instead, maybe you're going to mention the grandmother's name on the mic and mm -hmm. the family's going to feel so together and the family's going to be so happy because their happiness isn't dictated by my ability to pick this and this song. It's based on the entire package. Not too loud. No swears. 
good choices, didn't get too loud, did everything I was supposed to do, but also elevated the event to not being a typical DJ. And I think that that's where we are too hard on ourselves. But mm -hmm. if you're not nervous at a wedding, I'll be blunt. You should quit Give it up. being a DJ. Yeah, for sure. It's You've reached that point where it doesn't matter. Yep. Because yeah, K.K. Downing of Judas so Priest yeah. Yeah, said when I was in high school, yeah. and I never forgot it, and they said something about playing at gigs, and he goes, every gig is the same thing. I'm only as good as the last one. Mm -hmm. And I've maintained that, whether it's in a band or as a DJ, I firmly believe mm -hmm. I'm only as good as my last one, because otherwise I can't grow as a performer, an artist, and a DJ. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you Jay. Now we would go to the man himself with me. Wait, I've got more. Oh, Brian's up. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I just want everybody to understand that when Jay was growing up, the only difference between Reader's Digest and the Yellow Pages in his home was that the Yellow Pages was yellow. Was, otherwise, it's the same thing. Is this Cliff Notes time? By, do, still, do they still have Cliff thickness. Notes? There were very, very thick Reader's Digests in his home. I was going to start with it was the best of times. It was the worst of times, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't Dickens on this, did I? Did I? <laughs> I wanna... Okay, hey, wait a minute now. Not too much laughing because I, I, I do have a comedy break here in my notes. So, oh, okay. Well, let's Sorry. try to be serious, you know. serious. until that point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your comedy break was having Jay go. That yeah, I know. <laughs> Three, two, one. How many brain? And. and... You know, I think this is a really good topic and, and I agree mm. with a lot of things and I can, well, I shouldn't say agree. I can relate to a lot of things that Eric and, and Travis and Jay have said uh, a lot of things that just kind of struck a note, uh, Travis, when you were saying how, you know, there are times when you just don't feel like you, you were there and, and they loved you, but then there are other times when you feel like it was like, Oh, home run, no problem. And they're like cold fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, couldn't you have done this or that's like, wait, whoa, whoa, this is a great event. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I can totally relate to that. That happens to me sometimes too. It happened to me when I was doing that bouncy house thing a couple of weeks ago. I, oh, yeah. I did fine. And I, well, couldn't you have done like some line dances? Like, lady, it was 95 degrees outside. Nobody was here. And, and your guests were yeah. like, well, like a quarter mile away from me. No, I probably don't think I could have pulled that off. But yeah, I, I get it. What I will say is that when at the end of every event, and, and it's just something I've been doing for a long time because I never know, someone will come to me and say, hey, nice job. And my reply to that isn't, thank you. My reply is, oh, was it okay? Because I genuinely don't know. I, I'm doing an event unlike I've never done before. I don't do the same event every week. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to you know, very much custom tailor it for the client, you know, giving them what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. and that's what we all want to do ultimately. Right. So is that, was my interpretation of, of what would be cool for them? Was it the right one? Was it a good one? Was it one that they can deal with? They can, but I never know. I could have, well, you guys all know, I mean, Eric, you know, you do uh, stuff all the time when you've got a group of people in front of you, you can take it in multiple different directions and it's going to be fine. And you choose a mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You choose that fork in the road and there were multiple forks, multiple uh, prongs on that fork, I guess. And you chose one particular one and it worked out, but you know, you could have gone down this road or this road or this right, road. Right. Did you go down the right path? You know, mm -hmm. it's always a question and, and we do our best. And we do what we think is best, but what do we know? You know, we're not these people. We barely know these people, if at all. So it's tough. Um, That's going to lead into question number two tonight. Topic number two. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably I, I was just going to say that I'm experiencing a lot of this with these, I'm calling them children's events. I, I did my first of a few I have coming up this month. I did it on Friday. And I didn't really have a lot of direction. And it's like, okay, 14-year-old kids. Well, what the hell does that mean? I mean, there are a lot of different 14-year-old kids out there. Right. There are kids that are little kids, right? I mean, children. Mm -hmm. And then you have kids that are, you know, they want WAP. I mean, where do you go with this? Oh, 
Mm-hmm. And then, then how do the, how are the parents going to feel about where the kids want to go if they want to go a little more edgy? And if you don't go edgy, are the kids going to revolt against you? And are they going to enjoy themselves? I do fine with them. I really do. I, I've said that I really don't like doing them, but it's not that I can't do them. I do them and I do them well, but it's not my wheelhouse. And I never know, mm-hmm. you know, if I've really nailed it or not. But you're still looking at the same outcome of just like with a wedding. The, the bottom line isn't what we do. The bottom line is, were the bride and groom happy? The bottom mm-hmm. line is, was right. the client happy? Right. Did they mm-hmm. get what they wanted? Could they have gotten more? Could you have gone a different fork in the road? Of course. It's, it's almost like mm-hmm. buying a gift for somebody. You know, yeah. there's like always I, another okay, gift. It's Blanca's birthday. I'm going to get her this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. Is this the best I could have done? Could I have had a better idea? Yeah. here with this that you could have that's like well yeah I, yeah I I think so. idea. but you only get one you know 35th right. birthday you only right. get one wedding right right and i still think so, it all it comes down to you being in the moment at that time and saying and i tell every bride and groom the same thing i'll tell you 95 percent of a great wedding is if the bride and groom are smiling and they're happy so right. tell me what you want for dinner and cocktail so that you're going to be stoked when you hear England, Dan and John Ford Coley or Dream Theater mm-hmm. or Aerosmith mm-hmm. or whatever. Because yep. when you look at the best compliment at a wedding to me isn't you did a good job. It's man, th- like you're good friends with the bride and groom. No, not really. They hired me. They're, I'm just a vendor. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. They keep they've talked about you all night. They keep looking at you and giving you thumbs up and smiling. Then I did my job. That's my job is to make mm-hmm. them happy and let their guests enjoy that happiness. Nobody came to the wedding to dance. They came to have a good time. And the good time is a, based on a I, bride and groom being happy. I think Howie's got a good I, question I think, too. I, I think that sometimes I put too much emphasis on whether they're dancing or not. Mm-hmm. And case yeah. in point is... I thought I did a terrible job at this one event and it was, it was a civic event for the first responders and it was an anniversary. So they had all the politicians from all the surrounding towns and the, the County and so forth there. And man, I was hitting with bangers and there was just a handful of young kids dancing I could not get them to dance, but when I went back to cocktail hour music, like Michael Bublé and uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, Tony Bennett type of stuff, packed dance floor. Hmm. I'm thinking, really? man, I cannot win. I mean, if I stop playing that, right, empty the dance mm-hmm. floor. At the end of the night, I had. I had the mayor come up to me, shook my hand and said, great job. And then the organizer came up and handed me an envelope with a very generous tip. And so I asked the mayor, I said, if you don't mind me asking, why did you only dance to slow songs? They said, because everybody has a camera these days. And I am not going to get caught even dancing with my daughter because it'll the headline will be politician is with young girl instead of wife. (laughs) He said, the only pictures of me that night are going to be with me holding my wife in my arms. Right. So I completely misread this whole thing. Yep, Yep. I completely misread it. And then I knew better for the next year. And but I I thought, man, I really stunk tonight and I was I was completely wrong. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we are gonna take a quick comedy break here, <laughs> and I want your opinion. And this here is it's not gonna be a new segment or anything like that, but it's um the meme of the week, and I am gonna share this. <laughs> Please don't say anything about it because I'm going to ask a question after this is over. Okay. After you see this meme, I want to ask you guys a question about it and I want to share the sound and share. Here we go. 
Oh God, I saw this. <laughs> I saw this. <laughs> I saw that. That's hysterical. How many, how many people have seen it? I saw it. I saw it. One, two, three of us. Okay. Can and I'm genuinely guys, thinking of doing it. How many now? How many people can guess the song he was expecting? I think it was turned down got, for what? It was. It was turned yeah. down for what by Little John. Turned down for yeah. what? And it went into Dancing Queen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love doing stuff classic. like that. Though. Yeah, but yeah. that's the one I mentioned earlier. I do turn down for what? And when it gets to the towards the end of the song. I, I just bring in Luke Bryan, Country Girl Shake That For Me as a loop and start to like filter and out and in and people lose. If you right. have a country hip hop wedding, people lose mm -hmm. their minds like, oh, my God. And I get this. We didn't know you were that kind of a DJ. Like we've got to get Jay, a Country Girl Shake It yeah. From T-shirt. That's his well, go to song. That is right his now. go to. In, that I, one. I, it did, is. I did that a little research. I did now I'm doing Sam on House this party. clip here. Mm -hmm. And what it was, yeah. was the guy played the first 18 second buildup. Then there's the break and the guy's getting ready to get down. And instead of, you know, he drives. it was like, you know, dancing <laughs> queen, <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like you said, Jay, where you can do that later, you know, later in the song. They, they, he did that. They did that to, to spoof him. But anyway, well, don't you guys all do that echo out on like a sing, like you do oh, sure. living on a prayer where you drop the volume mm -hmm. and they sing. And then instead of coming back to living on a prayer, you come back to like shook me on night long or something. And right. they go nuts. Right. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Ooh, that's that's part of our job by description, I think, is where we're supposed to show them. Mm -hmm. It's not just song one into song two into song three and so on. I like well, bringing up okay. scratches. Yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. I, or, yeah, or that. Well, now that we've morphed into um, the second question, I will have to abandon that question. And I'm going to have to do, gee, I'm going to have to be like, I'm DJing and I have to think quick on my feet and come yep. up with something on the fly. Well, Don't now have we, have you ever had a client handcuff you as Eric would say, <laughs> and just bombard you with requests that clear the dance floor. And uh -huh. how do you respond to that? So we'll go with Eric again. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Howie and I were talking about this. So I had this bride last Friday and this was, this was exactly it. Country girl was requested. Motown was requested. The bride came up. She gave me a list of about 10 songs. Perfect. This is great. There were good songs on the list. Some of them were like memories and, you know, some good, some good dancing songs on there. At one point there was also on her list. She would really like to hear hollow notes. Uh, you make my dreams. So I came out of a slow song, went into You Make My Dreams, went into Whitney Houston, Dance With Somebody, went into Like a Prayer. The entire room is singing, and I'm like, I got these guys. I got these. The first hour, totally nailing it. Literally three people out of 100 sitting. Bride comes up. She goes, we want to hear EDM. And I said, okay. I said, do you mean like the dance music I was playing just a little while ago? She said, no, like EDM. Okay. So I played a couple of, you know, Tiesto or something, went into it, and then again, took off on another little journey. And uh, the groom comes up, said, uh, Megan would like to hear some more EDM. I said, okay, I, I got some more on her list. DJ got us falling in love. And we went and did that. Came up the last half hour. He said, we want to hear EDM just the last half hour of the night. I said, let's just clarify this. I said, I, I might be confused here by EDM. Do you really mean like the stuff that was on your list? Or do you mean like club stuff? that you'd hear in a club in Vegas. He goes, club stuff. I, we want to bounce. They handed out glow sticks to everybody. Now, mind you, every time I've changed over to the EDM versus more of the top 40 dancey songs, I go from a full dance floor to a third of a dance floor, right? So that's why, of course, after two or three songs, I bring them back on. We get them going again. Right in the middle of Fat Bottom Girls. Again, whole crowd is singing. My boyfriend would hear some more, like to hear some more EDM. So I said, what exactly do you want? So as people came up during the night and asked for Motown, Motown's a great choice at a wedding. Um, Country Girl Shaker for me, great choice at a wedding. 
Um, like you said, House Party is a good one. Save a Horse. Those are great songs to do a quick little mini set. But every time I got the crowd going, she would come up and knock me back down. And I, and, you know, and knocking the crowd back down. I get it. Your day, your way. But can I just please do my job? And so I sent Howie a text the end of the night. I said, you got to you, you got to add this into our talk on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Said, I'm sure it's nice happened to everybody. To We've probably all yeah. had this. Yeah. How about you, uh, uh, Travis? Yeah. Uh, you know, the requests are always a troublesome thing at weddings sometimes because you get that. It's it's not typically anyone that's directly involved with the wedding. It's always like a cousin or a friend, and they've had a little bit too much to drink, and they just start coming with those really obscure requests that you know just aren't going to work. But you play them just to kind of get them out of the way, and it clears the dance floor. I've gotten to the point where if I have that same person coming up to me all night long, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I just tell them, okay, cool. I, I, I've got it and I'll play it. But here's the thing. The last three songs you've requested, it's like the Red Sea and it parts and I have to work to get my crowd back. If if I see everyone splitting off the dance floor with this third song that you've requested, I'm going to mix right out of it. I don't want to lose the dance floor. And 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 what drives me nuts the most is the that person who requests it will leave with the rest of the crowd. And it's like, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this was the yeah. song that you wanted to hear so badly and you're just going to walk off with everybody else. So yeah, I've gotten to the point now where I just, when I've mm-hmm. got that person, look, if it's not, if it doesn't work, we're just right. going to switch out of it. Yeah. Hey, guys, hey guys, can you guys hear okay. me? Sure. Hey, uh, so <laughs> What I do um, usually. Hey, Don, Don, we're recording now. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I'm sorry. I don't have a camera in my uh, desktop. So I apologize. Don, Don. Thank Go you, ahead. Don. So, yeah. Okay. So, I'm we, gonna... so go, 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 go ahead. My apologies, man. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so Howie and I talked about this a little bit the other night, and I figured it's something that probably we've all experienced here or there, once or twice, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll share my uh, experience quick uh, before Brian gets back and before Jay uh, here, uh, does this for us. So um, I had a very strict uh, playlist, and this guy had a death metal version of happy that he wanted played. Luckily I was able to talk them out of that, but then they just, they had a very strict list and the first half hour, you, you could hear a mouse in there. If I, if I had turned down, you know, the, nobody on the dance floor, it was, it was horrible. And both the bride and groom came right up to my booth and said, nobody's dancing. What can you do? I said, well, I said, you can let me do my job. I said, is this, this is your first wedding, correct? And they said, yes. I said, well, I've done thousands of these. If you let me do my job, I can fill your dance floor. And they said, okay. So the first thing I did, I, they said, but, you know, we got, you know, older people. We don't want to hear old people music. I said, it's not going to be old. It's going to be contemporary top 40. It's going to be some bangers. I said, these people all have kids. They have radios in their cars. You'll have to trust me on this if you want a full dance floor and a memorable party. They said, okay, do it. And they let me loose. And so the first thing I played was the original version of Happy. And it packed the dance floor. And I followed it up with, uh, you know, shut up and dance. And they just went crazy. And then they had this big eyed look at me. And they were like, wow, thank you. They were mouth, thank you. And that was another one of those where, 
it it turned out very well in the end because we were allowed to do our job as the uh, DJs. So, um, let's see, Jay, if you can give us a Reader's Digest version and save Brian a little time. Absolutely. Um, and again, I think it's it's the amount of time in the industry and the experience sometimes mm-hmm. where you just you get to a level of this is the only way to handle these things. Because I think you have to be preemptive and I think you have to have expectations met. And I tell clients all the time in a meeting at a Starbucks, it's very easy to tell me this, but drunk at your wedding, it's a different story. So Mm. I give all my clients a music request list and I'm actually looking at my coming Friday wedding and they've requested two hours and 24 minutes of music. And it's a six hour event. And a lot of their tracks are dancing and they're kind of all over the map between Latin, country and pop. And as I said to them the other day on a phone call, and I said when they hired me, ultimately will come down to my goal is to have this be the the best wedding anyone's ever been to. So I'm not there to play the wrong songs, but I do know what to play. And as I said to the bride last week when I spoke to her, you can request up to five hours of music, but we need to have an agreement. And the agreement is ultimately do you want me to fill the floor and do my best to have a great time with your guests, whether they dance or don't? No, that's you do your job. So every wedding and every event I do, my clients know ahead of time, I've told them and they've said yes to me. No, no, no. I know we picked nothing but disco, but just, you know, do your job. And that way it gives me a lot more leeway because if they start mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I joke every with every couple about how the drunk bridesmaid that comes up wasted in the night and goes, Oh my God, the bride's best favorite song is easy. E bust a nut. Really? That's so funny. She never mentioned that in any of the meetings <laughs> and the bride and groom did laugh. And I go, no, 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 guys, I'm not kidding. This is a hundred percent accurate. One of you, one of the girls will come up wasted and tell me how the bride is the biggest ratchet, like got to do this, got to do that. Yep. And my goal is to have everyone have a great time. So I might turn on a dime, but I just want to make sure that we're all headed in the same direction. So even when you get wasted at your wedding, we've had this talk, correct? Oh, no, Jay, we we totally trust you. You do your thing. Okay. so at the wedding, if you get hammered and decide like, no, it's all about death metal. Okay, I'm not going to just play death metal because we've already had this talk when you were sober and i think travis that it comes down to that a lot where you get those clients that in the meeting are like this is our vision which is unrealistic because they're at starbucks or your office or wherever but then in the real world where they've had a few drinks now they loosen up i had a bride in june that was like not that happy with me because i played big sean dance the clean version and she wanted the dirty version and on the list of things i checked off in the meeting was all edited music and i Mm -hmm. told them so i already had it checked and she's like no 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 swears well guess what sweet little julie drunk at her own (laughs) wedding (laughs) to hear big sean unedited and afterwards at the end of the night i said how did everything go she goes awesome i said I'm sorry if I didn't play the version where he drops the N and F word every other word. Yeah. She goes, yeah, I saw that afterwards. I just want to apologize to you. I'm like, no, no need. (laughs) But I just want to make sure we're good with that. Like you knew coming into this, you weren't going to get that. Right. But I think, and she goes, I'm hammered. I'm like, no, I know that. Yeah. And you probably said, I've seen a, thousand hammered brides it's okay <laughs> you, you know i think if you if Let's, you're up front with people i'll play just disco all night as long mm-hmm. as you know that may not work right or if you want me to do my job and yeah. have a great time no we want the second one yeah well now let's go to our in-house musical savant oh. brian you know on jay's point was when i did that barn wedding I don't know when it was a couple of weeks ago. There was this chick who kept wanting me to play WAP. 
And I'm like, no, we're not playing WoW. Finally, I told her, I said, I'll tell you what. Why don't I play anything at all? And why don't you put your earbuds on and listen to WAP and dance to it? Because nobody else wants to hear that here. Except you. <laughs> I like that. Just go out there and dance to it all by yourself with your earbuds in. And she looked at me like I just like had told her off. But yeah, why does everybody have to hear this crap? If only you want to hear it, why do, why do you have to subject everyone in the room to it? If clearly mm-hmm. no one else in the room wants to hear this. Right. It's tough, though. I mean... I've done so many events this year, including the party on Friday with the kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and it was one of the mothers where I'm playing something and it's doing fine. And then some Karen is like, ah, I don't like that. Put something else on. No we one likes to this. hear this. Nobody likes this. Nobody likes Full this. Dance no, floor. Just no. You and the other 80 people dancing. Yeah, there, there's there's two times that well, it's happened multiple times this summer, and it's always some moron. But there, there have been two times this summer where they have come up to me when it's over with, and said, "Hey, that was really good. We had a great time." And my reply to that is, "I'm sorry you hated my music." Oh, I didn't hate your music. Well, then why were you doing this yeah, to what me was when this I was? Song? doing my job well no 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 i I just no i i just thought you know maybe the crowd might i was like you do realize that that's my job right (laughs) like that's why they pay me to do this Mm -hmm. this is very rude just so you know you're not going to make dj friends with this okay we're not friends just so you understand that so so you need me a little polite next time (laughs) 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 and maybe that's wrong but Stop it. But, but they were like, oh, well, I want your card and I want you to do this party for you. Like, well, just, just so you, you don't do this to me at your party. I'm happy to yeah, yeah. play your party for you. People are Everybody's weird, a potential man. client. But, but back, back to the point, what, how he was talking about. I remember doing an event. It was years ago. It was a wedding. It was, it was a, a Jewish wedding. I was only doing the reception. Um, the a uh, rabbi I sat with and had dinner with the rabbi and he was a hoot. I love this guy, but the music they had asked for was stuff that I don't think anyone there wanted to hear. And they insisted that I only play their songs. And I did. And the couple danced alone because no one else had anything. It was all very personal stuff. And I'm like, well, no one else did. Well, we don't care. This is our party. Oh, it was the weirdest thing. And I remember the rabbi that, that I remember the rabbi that night told me he just I he he came up to me and he just started talking. He said, you know, I think Gentiles got got it right. See, us Jews, we don't have a heaven and hell. So there's <laughs> there's no punishment. <laughs> so, but at least Gentiles have this fear if they screw up, something bad's going to happen to them later. I think they're onto something. I think it's a great idea. Maybe these kids would be such jerks if they thought there was some consequence. It's yeah. The society right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no consequence. You can just be a jerk and be self indulgent. Yep. But uh, I don't know, man. I mean, sometimes you're just better off. Just saying, okay, fine, we're gonna play your songs, and you play their songs, and then they come up to you and say, Do something, no one's dancing. And you say, Okay, well, how about My I turn. play all these songs on your do not playlist that are the right songs for this event? <laughs> right. How about I do that? Mm-hmm. I've told this story several times. I uh I I did a wedding. Well, I did two in a row, and they were like two weeks apart, and it was for the same group of people, so very similar group of people. The bride for the first wedding was the bridesmaid in the second wedding. And the bridesmaid for the first wedding was the bride for the second wedding. So they, you know, switch places. The first wedding I did, oh yeah, it was one of those do not play lists from hell, which I did not solicit. They just pfft, hear. And it was everything that everybody wanted to hear. It was, it was all the good songs. It was very extensive. And and I stuck to it, and it was an okay event. And I remember telling the bridesmaid, I said, look, don't worry. 
your wedding's going to be better because you're not going to tie my hands behind me. I don't know why she did that. That is ridiculous. I'm like, don't worry about it. We're going to, yours is going to be cooler because you're not going to do this to me. And this is the result you get. We're going to have a better result of yours. So two weeks later, I'm there. I'm playing tunes. I got a packed dance floor. And the bride from the first wedding is on the floor all night. Jamming. Just jamming. Get out. And she comes up to me later, like high fives. Oh, man, I'm having so much fun. You're doing a great job. I'm like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> you're must dancing. Be yeah, but she wasn't everything. under the gun. You're, you're dancing to every song that you didn't want at your wedding. She's oh, yeah. But she wanted to look cool. I love those songs. Right. I just wanted something different. I, I got to interject right. for 30 seconds. When I got married 21 years ago, I gave the DJ like 100 songs I didn't want to hear. And oh, to his credit, he came up to me like 20 minutes into dancing where no one was dancing. And I'm like, oh, this is bull. Like, what the hell? Like, no one's dancing. And he came up to me and he goes, hey, Jay, I just want to show you. I've put a check mark next to the songs people have requested that are on your do not playlist. There was like half of them. And I go, you know what? Do me a favor. Play whatever they want and play it as much as they want. Two, the, within two songs, he played the Macarena, full dance floor. And I realized that moment, something about being a DJ. Yeah, It's not about you. And Brian and I have had this talk. Mm. The ceremony is for the bride and groom. The dinner is hosted by the bride and groom. But the party, the reception afterwards is for the guests. It's thank play you. what right. they want. Don't mm -hmm. play what you want. If you want to, and mm -hmm. I tell every client ever since that talk Great years way to ago, say that. I tell every client, the music for you is dinner. Cocktail, you're doing photos. Then you might join or might not. But dinner is your music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cocktail mm -hmm. is for the guests and the environment, some reggae, some jazz, some whatever. Dance wise, you need to mm -hmm. untie my hands and let me play to the people in front of me. I am profiling, they are a certain age, they are a certain ethnicity, they are mm -hmm. a certain whatever, but let me play to them. If there are things you adamantly don't want, give me a no list. But once it hits five songs, Anything over that, you're starting to read into it. Your name it's used not to be a Karen, matter of way. not looking cool. It's like so let me get this Karen. straight, Jay. At your own wedding, yeah, you, I was an you were a Karen, Karen yeah. Brennan. You were no, a Karen I was because I'm like wedding. Wedding. <laughs> every wedding I DJ, I have to play Billy Idol, Moni Moni, and I have to play Macarena, and I, have I don't to play want this, that this, this. And this is again, this is back in 2000. So we're oh. talking 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. that I've had experience as a DJ. And at the time, I thought the secret was, I'm a DJ, so I'm so cool. I'll pick yeah. all the great music for the crowd because yeah. I'm a DJ, so I'll program my own wedding. <laughs> the interesting I'm, I'm thing, so yeah. good. And literally within 20 minutes of it, he goes, I just want to let you know, these are all the songs on your no list that people have requested. And like yeah. half of them were checked off. And I'm like, you know what? Do me a favor. Take every request, play every song you think you should play. I yeah. just want them to have a good time. And it was such yeah, an yeah. eye opener for me because I came into it thinking as a DJ, not as a host. We're ever evolving. Mm -hmm. with yeah, stuff. we are. Oh, and sure. that's the thing. No. And I try to tell okay. every client, you're hosting a party. What would you play at home? Well, if you the, the think, example, to, to you your know, point, Jay, the, the example that, that I've given over and over and over again, almost exhaustive, is the Aunt Betty factor. And the Aunt Betty factor, yeah. if you don't know who Aunt Betty is, she's, she's my, my fictional character, but you can relate <laughs> to her. She's from Kalamazoo, Michigan, okay? She's never been married. She's got an apartment. She's got a cat, you know? She, she's Probably got a little four-cylinder car. She's very nice, though. Maybe she's a school teacher, okay? She's got a four-cylinder. So she's got a four-cylinder. <laughs> she's a practical car. She, wears she has shoes. a Tesla today. She doesn't get out a lot. You know, but yeah. but Aunt Betty loves you, and she's coming to your wedding in Denver, and she had to get somebody to watch her cat, and she had to take off work and take some vacation time, and she bought you an awesome gift. She paid for flight. She bought clothes. She always wears the same sensible shoes to work, but she bought some shoes, and she bought a dress. You've thought and this through. She's, 
She yeah, Brian has too much downtime. Hotel, food, all that. She's spending a lot of money she on. Got her this. hair reblued. She got her hair reblued. <laughs> <laughs> and Betty can't wait to do the macarena. Right. She, yes. That, that's like the, the yes. payoff for the all highlight. this crap she's had to go through to come to your stupid wedding. She wants the macarena. She spent a thousand dollars to be there. Can yeah. she hear the macarena, please? Yeah. Can, can you just let her have it? No, we don't want any line dances. Well, what if Aunt Betty wants it? Ah, well, I guess this is the kind of stuff you got to. And yeah. That's yeah. when mm-hmm. I got those clients who say, we don't want this, 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 or this. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, all I have to ask them is this question. What if someone requests something on this list? And then they'll say something like, oh, well, then by all means, play it. We right. just don't want you to play it by default, because then we feel like you're going to sound like every other yeah. DJ at every other wedding we've been to for the last eight years. Yep. And that's Read legit. List. That's no. totally legit. Yeah. Yes. And no by request. Okay. All right. We have time. If we can pull this off we do. for a lightning round. Oh boy. Ooh. Try to keep it to three minutes. <laughs> what would you say or less? Hopefully. <laughs> What would you say was your one of your favorite aha moments or one of those that the client just you made that moment, that memory for them, that aha? Travis? Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't their wedding. I did a wedding this year and it was the same situation Brian was talking about where uh, the bride of that wedding was the bridesmaid in the next wedding. So I knew that the couple were going to be there. I knew Ben and and Lacey were going to be there. So I ran to Walgreens and I got them a two year anniversary card because this wedding was like two or three days before their two year wedding anniversary. I knew they'd be there. So when I ran into Ben right after the ceremony, I handed him this card and at first he didn't recognize me because I've changed my hair and I've lost weight since then. And uh, he was like, what is this? I was like, you remember me, right? I'm Travis. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, you were a DJ. He opens it up and he's like literally crying, gives me a big hug. And uh, he actually- That's great. It was such a cool moment. He actually told me that his uh, wife was pregnant and no one knew yet, except for him, her, and their parents. And but, now uh, you. He kinda, <laughs> and now me, he kind of let it yeah. slip because he, he just thought it was such a cool wow moment. That's wonderful. How so about if he ever you, gets Eric? Divorced, you can do his next wedding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. How about exactly. you, Eric? So I have a few of these. Now, I've been in the business long enough now. Well, you only got three now. minutes. That's right. I will be quick. That <laughs> I'm doing weddings of kids, that the, of parents. I did their wedding the first time. They've had children. Now their kids are getting married. Oh, wow. So this one couple that I know, this guy, Todd and Charlene, I pulled out Firehouse Love of a Lifetime at their kid's wedding. And they just looked at me and I was like, I remember. I just have a knack for remembering first dances. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like a, I'm autistic in that way, but you are, <laughs> you know, I pulled that out and they just, they looked at me and they're like, I said, how many years has it been? They said 21 years. And for some reason it just stuck in my head and I just remembered it. So yeah, a, a smile on the father and mom of the, uh, the bride. All right. We already know what Jay's is having grandma, uh, wiki wiki so we'll skip him now go ahead jay <laughs> I, that that was a big one honestly and by the way eric i got hired today for september 1st next year it's a thursday by a bridesmaid from a wedding i did in 2007 on the clock dude and her cousin current. was like oh you know i forgot all about your name and my cousin anna recommended you i'm like oh that's right i met you then yeah, I was 17. Now I'm 31. So it's like, oh, that's awesome. So I have to find their first dance because that's my style too. Yeah, yeah. But my aha moment was three years ago, I got hired by another company to do a wedding at a venue. I show up and the, all the client had sent me an email was, we like fun dance music and EDM. Okay. I get there and they mention they're from Boston. And I go, oh, no way. I'm from Boston. We get on the dance floor and there's some confusion after the first father, daughter, mother, son dances about doing the cake or something. And I look at the crowd and I hit play on DJ Scooter's version of 
shipping off to Boston, which has Red Foo in the beginning saying, if you love Boston, put your hands in the air. And they literally lost their minds to the point where That's it's awesome. a venue that I was then immediately placed on their preferred vendor list. And since that wedding have done 40 weddings there. So it's that if you can get it together in a second, to me, are those aha moments where you're like, mm -hmm. God damn, I really do know what I'm doing. That's awesome. I will go now and I'll let Brian close out the show. Yeah, I'm out of this. The, so the, one, the one that really stands out for me was in my market and just about everywhere when it was first came out, thanks to our in-house graphics guy, Jimmy Spin. He's down in the uh, lower right-hand corner on my screen, James M. De Palma, affectionately Jimmy Spin. Awesome graphics artist. And the hot thing was monograms, but they were static. You know, filigree and the name and the date in there, right? So he makes that for me, but makes it into a, a motion monogram. And as the thing comes up, there it is. And I got the idea. Hey, wait a minute, Jimmy, I need five seconds in there. I, I know I was a pain in the neck to him, but I said, please, can you redo this? And he goes, why? I said, because I want to freeze it. And that's what I did. And it was a tent wedding. And I had that up there, their name, the filigree and the date. And then I set this up with the bride and groom and waited until it got dark. And then I called Jack and Jill, will you come out for a special dance and share some of your magic with your guests? And they started dancing. And then I said, would you point to your monogram and share your the magic of your love? <laughs> and they pointed to the monogram and then I hit my clicker and hit play fireworks started going off in the motion monogram and then two hearts right around their name people ran with their cell phones to take pictures of this motion monogram i was like i nailed it i nailed it that night thanks to jimmy and that was a wonderful moment so yep, yep. i'm gonna let brian close out I take the path of least resistance. I'm a bit like electricity that way. So I'm, always looking, friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm always looking for things that just kind of organically are happening and, and take advantage of those things. And uh, I, I think as a DJ for many years, I, I would say probably the better part of 20 years, when there was a first dance or something, I would be on the microphone and say, hey, give Bob and Susan a big round of applause, first dance. And people would clap i was watching uh and, and i get a hard time jay teases me about this but i i pull a lot of inspiration out of stand-up comedy so i was watching this this show called talking funny it was chris rock uh ricky gervais jerry seinfeld and louis ck and um louis was saying how when he was younger he was talking to jerry and said what do i do like if i'm if i'm doing a bit you know, and people are clapping. What do I do? You know, do I, you know, I, do I interrupt them? What do I do? He says, no, I never do that. So freeze in the moment, just freeze. If you're, if you're given a position like this with the mic, freeze, let them clap, let them applaud, let them do whatever they do. And when it subsides, move on. So I took that to my first dance and my father, daughter, and my mother, son. So instead of trying to create a moment where I'm encouraging people to clap or whatever, or respond when the mm -hmm. dance is over and they hug the only thing i might do i only have one hand to do it now is kind of go you know like come on clap people but i don't say anything on the microphone i let the moment breathe and i let them clap and i let them cheer or whatever they're doing and i let the hug happen mm -hmm. and I let the hug release and I let the clap subside before i move on to the next thing I think that was my biggest aha moment that, you know, sometimes you don't yeah. have to create the moment. It just happens. You got to let it happen. You got to let it breathe. I like the phrase, let the moment breathe. Very Pink Floyd. Mm, very nice. Yes. Very Pink Floyd. 
And you don't have to do anything. Well, it's happening in front of you. Just shut exactly. up. Just let it happen. <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> well, thank you guys for being here. Um, we've got some very nice comments in the chat. It's a very interesting topic for the night. And I, I hope everybody else appreciates it. Hey, when you see this on replay, folks, feel free to uh, send in ideas um, and we'll, we'll do uh, our very best to uh, get it on. Thank you all for tuning in and have a good night. Thanks, Howie. Good night. Thanks, Howie.